Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, we're going to be continuing with the item system tutorial series. What we're going to be doing in this video is bringing across the dynamic tooltip UI I designed in a video from about a week or two ago. We're going to be basically implementing that to our current system. And then next video, we'll start working on the hotbar and so on. But I want to basically bring this across because when I made it in this video, it was an independent of video. So there's some things I did that worked, but obviously we want to do differently. So for example, um, the actual item slots in this had a hard reference to the UI pop-up um, and so on. Now, the actual code I wrote in this video, I'm just going to uh, copy and paste across. It's on my GitHub anyway, just because I've already written it in a tutorial. If you want to go learn about why I did what I did, so, you know, each line you can go and um, either find the GitHub or watch this video. But we're going to be bringing that across, setting it up with our new system and using events to actually alert the uh, tooltip to open and close or like show and hide because in reality, you don't want the inventory to know the tooltip pop-up UI even exists. You just want to basically say when you hover an item, hey, this was the item that was hovered, and then obviously that UI is going to listen for that. If you start using events like everywhere in your game for different things happening, then eventually if like, for example, you want to add a quest system or an achievement system, it's very easy to like do that because you can just listen in for, sp for specific events. And then when those events get triggered, you can increase the counter on the uh, quest UI, for example. So it actually does have many advantages rather than hard coding. I think it, you know, it, it makes so much more sense. Obviously for this video, as I said, when I did it, it was a standalone video. So I just made the button have a hard reference to the tooltip pop-up. Uh, system, but in this video I'm going to show you now, uh, well not show you, the video I'm going to do now, uh, we're going to set up an event system to do that so the actual inventory doesn't know about the item pop-up UI, and all the item pop-up UI knows is an item is to be displayed, it doesn't even know what an inventory is, it just knows that an item has been hovered really. So we're going to set that up, bring that across, I'm going to show you it every step of the way, so don't you don't need to worry, let's get into it. But before we get into it, of course, I got to thank my patrons. So special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Thomas Huster, Remy Baldwin, and Phil Bourne. If anyone else is able to help the channel out monetarily, then the links to my Patreon and everything else are down below. Um, if you can't help monetarily, then it would be very highly appreciated if you would drop a like, subscription, Twitch follow, anything you can do would mean a lot. But apart from that, let's start making the system now. Okay, so in our uh, project, the first thing we actually want to do is create uh, some new events. So like last time I said, if you don't know about my events, then go back and watch the event system I made. The, I made two videos about it and I linked them in the previous video's description. I probably won't link them again, but I could. Uh, maybe I will. But regardless, we're going to make some events for Unity like hotbar item events. So for example, on these we can pass through integers, floats, bools, but we need to override to be able to pass through our own custom class. So we've got the hotbar item, which is just anything that can go on the hotbar. This is like the base class of all our items. So I, I would have called it item, but then for example, I don't want spell to be of type item. It's kind of like a hotbar item. I don't know, it's just my naming. It's just the way I did it. Uh, I don't need those imports. But regardless, we want to write some events for hotbar items to be able to pass through as data. So for example, I can go to the int event, copy paste, I can rename it uh, hotbar item event. So it's a hotbar item event. And then make sure I name it here as well. So hotbar item event. Then of course the uh, data type being passed through is of type hotbar item, which will need a an import for it to know what it is. Then you can, for example, replace this int with hotbar item and this int here with hotbar item. And once that's all done, that's all you need to do for this file, so you can save it and then go to the next two and do the same. So I'm going to speed this up, but obviously if you want to make sure you've done it right, then you can check the uh, code in GitHub afterwards. Also, I'll just quickly show you it after I've done the speed up, but I don't need to explain every little step of this. Okay, so for the final one, for the Unity event type, just put hotbar item there and put hotbar item there, make sure you've got the input. Uh, that's really all you have to do. And then obviously, yeah, for the listener, you have to make sure these are all right for the right amounts, for the right types of data. You could put all of these different ones in, what's well, so you could put all of these events in one file and all these in one file, all these in one file. But um, the problem with that is just the fact that like, um, it becomes very hard to find the one you want. Obviously, you can use built-in search tools, but I don't like how messy it would get. At least like this, it keeps it in alphabetical order, and you know which one is what, which. 
it doesn't really like make much difference having them in separate files. I just don't want the more cluttering one. And eventually, if you have loads of different data types for the events, you don't want to have a one piece, of, one file with like tons and tons and tons of classes. I like having it all spread out. That's up to you. So we've got the free hotbar item events, basically the scripts you need for that. So now we want to actually put in the code where we raise these events and then write the code where we listen for the events. Okay, so a while back we wrote the item drag handler, which is the base class for everything that can be dragged. So like, you know, hotbar slots, inventory slots, whatever. Now all these kind of slots are going to want to display the info of the thing they're representing, the item slot they're representing. So we actually want to do the event calling here. So what we need to do is we need to, at the top, where we've got the item slot UI, we're going to have a serialized field um, protected hotbar item event. It's going to need an import like so, uh, and we'll call it on, I called it, whoops, get rid of this, uh, on mouse start hover item. You can always come up with better names than me, but anyway, I want another, we want another, um, another one, so we want to have a void event now, because when we start hovering an item, we want to be able to pass through what item it is we started hovering. But when we end up hovering, we don't really need to pass any data through. We just need to say, you know, end. So we'll say on mouse end hover item equals null. And now we have to go call these events, basically. So if we actually scroll down, the I put raise event in different places, right? So for the is hovering, we want to say, like, on if we disable and we're hovering, we want to say on mouse end right because we've disabled the object then our next listener is here so on pointer down obviously if um well no so when you left click on an item when you like interact with it you want the pop-up ui to go away uh i think i used to have it without but it was just a bit weird and I might, it might actually cause some problems but i can't remember exactly what there was a reason i added it um i think it just looks better maybe so make sure to raise the end there when you press the left mouse button on the item uh, we also want to raise an event when our pointer enters it, obviously we want to say um, like the enter item. So is it on mouse start hover item dot raise and it takes in the item. So we have to say item slot UI dot the slot item. And then down here, obviously on pointer exit, we're going to do the same, but we're going to say end hover. So on mouse end hover dot raise. So now we've linked up all the events inside here. We don't really need to do anything else when it comes to calling them. So we just need to go back to Unity. We need to create those two events. So let's go to our game events folder. Uh, create a folder for the inventory. That can go in there. Now we just want one um, pretty much just for like items in general, uh, if you get what I mean, because the hovering doesn't necessarily mean it's the inventory right you could be hovering on the hotbar or on anything else really but i mean then again it's two of items so i guess we'll go with inventory i can't think of a better way to do it like a better naming convention it's up to you put put these what like call them whatever you want it doesn't matter but we, we want to make a void event for ending so game event underscore inventory underscore what was it on mouse end hover item but then we also want to make another one which is of type um, hotbar item event for the start hover. So game event underscore inventory underscore on mouse start hover item. You can make sure you know what script is what because if you look on the right here it tells you uh, the end is a void but the start is a hotbar item. So now we can actually make listeners for these events. Um, obviously the listener is going to be on the UI to display it and then the listener for the end is going to be on there as well to hide it. So now we're going to have to actually uh, make the UI. So I'm just going to basically copy what I did in my other project and uh, I'll catch you up there because obviously you guys can just watch that video and build it up again yourself for the uh, UI.
Okay, so I'm back now after setting up the UI. Obviously, you can just download this project at the end of the video and just have it how it is. Or you could have tried to copy um, the previous video that I showed you to get it to this point. Uh, I might do some renaming at the end with the UI elements so that I keep this naming system kind of um, consistent. So like canvas underscore, you know, background underscore main or whatever. But for now, that's all fine. That's all set up. And I've just put in the default text that I had to show that's how it kind of looks like. Uh, obviously, I can apply the overrides. And then on this, yeah, sometimes it goes weird when you do that. Like, it, it, whatever, just it's fine because it gets set automatically by code when you're actually using it in the game. But we need to have the script on it for the actual UI. So if I go to scripts, items, and I create a C-sharp script for the um, hover info pop-up, like that, that's the class that sits on the base of this. So um, hover info pop-up, we're going to put it at the top. I think I need to go in the prefab to do that actually. So hover info pop-up, put it there. Ignore the scaling going all weird, it's fine. If I click off it and click back on, it'll fix. Yeah, it's just weird like that. Um, now this script obviously has no coding currently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy and paste the code from my other video. Uh, I've already like commented and stuff. I'm gonna take out uh, some of the stuff I do. So for example, I don't want to have to use the Odin inspector for this. I will remove the comments from this. I'm just gonna keep it as minimal as possible. If you want to look at the comments in this this specific thing, then you can follow my other video. But this series, I'm just gonna leave it how it is like this. So this is just the minimal, this is what we want. It's like I showed you in the other video. We've got all the imports right, no errors. Close it, all the fields are gonna appear now. So now we just need to drag everything in. So the uh, canvas object is this, the pop-up object is the main background, the info text is of course the info text, the offset I went with 50 and the padding of 25 on the screen and then all we need to do now is tell the when we uh, start hovering an item we want to tell this script on the hotbar listener to um, no, on the hover info pop-up to display info and then when we stop hovering over an item, we want to tell the hotbar info pop-up to hide info. Now if we apply all, and of course you want to make sure this canvas is disabled by default so it's hidden. Uh, I'm hoping now, if I've done this all right, when I press play, obviously we've got no items in the inventory, so we need to go to the inventory and do one of those uh, test ads so we can add a test of like four of the uh, the consumable, so we can say test add, when we mouse over it now, um, ooh, okay, so we didn't tell the actual slots what event to raise, so they're trying to raise a null field, so if we go to slot into the prefab and tell the item icon here, the uh, on start hover is that, and the on, on end hover, sorry, is that, save, go back, try again, What'll happen now is it'll actually raise those events without re without raising an error, hopefully. So we can add an item, I can mouse over it, and then it's uh, info display. So it's a health potion, uh, health potion used as something maybe max stack five. See that, that bit where it says like health potion twice, I haven't implemented rarity, so I think I just got it to return the name and so on. So now it's up to you in these different, so if you made a different item class, you remember when I made the consumable, we wrote this. So we have all the data on a consumable, which is just the use text added on to all the stuff an inventory item has, which is, for example, your sell price and stack and so on. Um, your goal, I would say, for after this video, because I'm going to obviously go and add this before next video myself as well, is to create some more item types. So for example, after consumable, you might want to add ammunition, spell, so on. And you want to you wanna put in the scriptable object all the data that those types have. And you want to overwrite this function in those, basically saying, how to append it. So I'd say we don't want to put append name because the actual thing itself gets the name anyway. That's why it showed the name twice. But obviously if you implement rarity to inventory items, then you can add the rarity color name. Maybe it'll say, you know, health potion common or rare in blue or green or whatever. Um, 
And then if you have a spell, you might want to display the color based on the element, not on the rarity, because spells don't usually have rarities, they have elements. And then maybe you want ammunition, you want to display uh, what weapon it's used for. So it's up to you now, as a kind of challenge from this video, if you're up for it, is to make some more types of items, scriptable objects, be able to add them to your inventory, and then we'll move on when we end up making the hotbar to raising an event when we press a hotbar slot. And that event will say like, oh hey, we use this spell, or this this item was used, and then obviously depending on what type of item it is, it does something different. So if it's a spell, then the spell caster will probably listen in, or like the code handling spell casting will listen in saying, oh, that spell was tried, tried to be cast. And then you probably should say, you know, let's make sure it's off cooldown, let's make sure um, it's, you've got enough mana for it, for example. And then equally, you might press to use some ammunition in your game that might do nothing whereas for some games i'm selecting ammunition will just change what type of ammunition your current weapon's using so there's so many things you could do with this and obviously i can't cover every single person's unique way of implementing it so this is a general implementation i hope you take this and implement it into your own games if you've got any questions obviously feel free to ask below help support the channel uh, on social media in any way you can share this video like the video subscribe just follow my twitch anything it'll mean a lot to me um Join my Discord server if you want to ask for help as well. But apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.